independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. Follow the money, find the science. That's what I keep saying. Follow the money, find the science. You do that, you guess what you find out? Maybe not everything's cracked up to be. Yesterday I talked a bit about those sneaky contracts that the Pfizer companies have and Moderna and, and all of the companies have with not just our country and their veil of secrecy around the globe when it comes to this stuff. Sorry about that. <clears throat> Follow the money, you find the science. Remember how everything was going to be what? Well, we're going to give you the opportunity to uh, choose for yourself. Then it was like, well, we're never going to make you wear a mask and mandate it. And then you had to. And then you, it was, we're never going to do uh, mandates at all for any of this stuff. And then you had to do it. And, and, and that's where we are. Now, it's so funny because when I posted that yesterday, people on the left who follow me, who many of them are very nice people, but if you talk about capitalism, there and many times they poo poo it right like it's evil it's bad it's all of those kind of things but because it's this 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 religion now of vaccine 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 that when you post this kind of stuff about follow the 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 money and there's the real science what happens oh no no this is good this is okay chad you 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 should like this no, it's not about whether or not they have the right to charge whatever they want to charge. I got zero problems with that. Charge the hell out of it. You guys put it together. And again, I will tell you, I have got the vaccine and I've also had it. So I have natural immunity and the vaccine. Apparently, boom, that's a win. But it's the fact that these businesses and this you, people want to know what capitalism, crony capitalism is not capitalism. Crony capitalism is when everybody's working together and the people, well, the benefits to them are what? Of course the mandates are fantastic for their business. How would you like it today if you're a plumber to get to the point where the city that you work mandates that they have to use you? You're like, oh, damn, that'd be awesome. Exactly. Because if they didn't use you, then maybe the, the for whatever reason, they would come up with some bizarre reason of why they didn't use you. That somehow the toilet seat didn't sit right or the, the, the that, that something would happen potentially, just some made-up crap. This is one of those situations. And then to top it all off, when you mandate all of this stuff, you're also asking groups of people to do things that wasn't in their pay, their pay grade, if you will, at the beginning of it. So In-N-Out Burger has been ordered to close in San Francisco. Why? Representatives of a popular burger chain are defiant after having their only San Francisco location being briefly shut down by the Department of Public Health. In-N-Out at Fisherman's Wharf is back open, but only for takeout. The restaurant was ordered to cease all operations last Thursday after health inspectors found workers repeatedly failing to verify that customers who were eating inside were actually vaccinated. Oh, so that's their job now? That's their job? I love what In-N-Out said. By the way, Contra Costa, they closed another In-N-Out. In-N-Out sent us a statement reading as follows. We refuse to become the vaccination police for any government. It is unreasonable, invasive, and unsafe to force our restaurant associates to segregate customers into those who may be served and those who may not whether based on the documentation they carry or any other reasons. Oh, well, that seems like a normal thing. Yeah, it is. It's absolutely a normal thing. Why would I want to do that? So my little brother and sister work in and out, did work in and out, uh, and it, the place is run absolutely fantastic. It's, it's insane how well they run it. The whole thing, for those of you guys who don't know, if you don't have an in-out near you, you need to just bang the drum to get it there. And I'm sure San Francisco would love to get rid of In-N-Out and anything else that they don't believe in. For those of you guys who don't know, In-N-Out Burger, the owner of In-N-Out Burger, but the, the family itself is extremely evangelical Christians. You can go and look. If you buy a drink there, you hold it up. It has a Bible verse at the bottom of the cup. That's that's who they are. So, of course, they're going to go especially check them, right? 
I haven't heard about McDonald's. They've been doing that at McDonald's and of other places. You're really checking that? You've given us another job to do. Follow the money, find the science. Can't have natural immunity. We can't talk about that. I know Israel did a big study, but that really doesn't matter because it's not the right kind of immunity. We're going to ask certain businesses, hey, could you ask the 19-year-old that's working their way through college, right, if they could be the vaccine police and tell a 32-year-old who's been out working all day, who just wants to have a damn burger, who maybe even be vaccinated but can't find his damn passport, if there's some way, shape, or form that you could, I don't know, tell them they can't do this. You can't come in here now. You're not the right time of you're not the right type of clean we're looking for. The San Francisco Department of Public Health said vaccination is particularly important in a public indoor setting where groups of people are gathering and removing their masks, factors that make it easier for the virus to spread. This is why San Francisco requires proof of vaccination for indoor dining. Now we're checking with some other counties and we've learned that the in and out in Pleasant Hill was cited twice for violating Contra Costa County's indoor dining health order. So ridiculous. It really is. It really is. Well, that's the rules. Have you seen the rules? Remember, this is Mayor London Breed when she had the big mask order. Remember that? What was that? She's out dancing, hanging out at the club, but Tony, Tony, Tony's there. So, and if you guys don't know this, one of arguably the greatest artists in the history of the world, so I can do what I want whenever I want, because I'm the mayor, and I put these things in place to protect you. I live above these things. You don't. Follow the money, find the science. So you're saying this thing isn't real? No, it's real. Absolutely, it's real. It should be treated with respect. And if you're 72 years old and you've got comorbidities, your best thing to do is mask up, limit going out, and make sure at this moment in time that you have all your vaccines, including your boosters. If you're 25 years old and you're in good shape and you happen to catch this, you're going to be fine. You are. You're going to be fine. I got the vaccine, the shot, whatever you want to call it. But the fact that this thing is such a joke. How many of you out there, like, for instance, here, I love being here. I got a great setup. They're kind enough to allow me to do my morning show out of here, and I do a show locally for them. Bonneville's been fantastic to me. Arguably the best company I've ever worked for, and I've worked with a lot of companies in radio, just ridiculous. My company, Radio America, that is my partner in this. Arguably the best company in the world. Fantastic. I don't work out of their studios. I work out of this studio. We have to wear a mask. We all here have to wear a mask. We don't know why at this point in time. 99% of the people here are vaccinated. On top of that, 99% of the people walk around with chin diapers on and nobody says anything. Yesterday, I put my mask on top of my head like a yarmulke. Not going to lie to you. Represent my Jewish faith a little bit. Because remember, I'm Jewish. But... Nobody said anything to me because it's all a placebo effect. Can we get you to do something? Can you be the frog in the water? And we're going to turn up the heat a little bit. It's frustrating. It is. It is absolutely frustrating. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text the program. Love hearing from every single one of you. Gabby Petito case. Who else? I'm going to ask a question here. Who else? finds it weird that for five weeks nobody could find this guy nobody knew where anything about him they looked all over the place you name it did he go to mexico did he go to canada is he in this swamp over here is he in north carolina is he on the appalachian trails and bob and dad did what a key discovery in the search for Gabby Petito's former boyfriend, Brian Laundrie. As authorities say they've uncovered what may be human remains in Florida's Myakkahatchee Creek Environmental Park. The discovery made near a trail Brian frequented. His parents, Chris and Roberta Laundrie, leading investigators to the scene. Yeah. 45 minutes it took them to find stuff. 45 minutes. Nobody thinks that's weird. So the rest of us and where it is in the Wachitachi is literally behind their house. Like a reserve almost behind their house. 
They're like, hmm, where else could Brian have gone? Well, there's that super secret safe place you used to always go. Now, in fairness, it was underwater for a while, and they found some remains. But for context, it took two days to confirm Gabby Petito had been found. But in that instance, the body matched her description down here in Florida. This could be a lengthier and more meticulous process as investigators say they still have to first confirm that these remains are even human. Yeah. So. And if it was underwater the way that they say it was and it has receded, uh, is there a chance that something. Gators got a hold of him even if he did commit suicide, if that's his body, if that is a human body. But who else just finds it weird that mom and dad, within 45 minutes ago, and you know what, today's the day I'm going to go looking for him, find some stuff of his. Bit odd. I'm just saying. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Tweet at us, text the program. Love hearing from every single one of you. Will Facebook change his name? We've got some hilarious sound from yesterday's Partial Netflix walkout slash zoom out and the tolerance of the people that were there. Oh, it was on full display. My goodness me. The tolerance is huge. The tolerant are so tolerant of nothing. Car Shield. Love Car Shield. If you've never had Car Shield and you're thinking to yourself, self, why would I want Car Shield? Well, how about this? In a day and age where it's tougher to get vehicles. And you're thinking about, I need to make sure that my vehicle lasts as long as it can and don't have a warranty on it. That's why you want CarShield. CarShield gives you 24-7 roadside assistance, a rental car for free while your car's in the shop. They'll reimburse you for that. And I love the fact that it gives you, you know, this, this amazing opportunity to choose the place you want to take it so you know it's getting done right. Absolutely. CarShield cars go further because Car Shield takes care of them. So when that check engine light comes on, don't fret. Car Shield's got you covered. They could save you thousands of dollars in covered repairs. So make sure you get yourself some Car Shield. It's just a couple bucks a day. Go look at all of the programs that fit what it is that you're looking for. Maybe you're worried about the electronics. Maybe you're worried about the transmission. Whatever it is, Car Shield has your back. This is what I want you to do right now. All right? CarShield.com slash Benson. You go there. That saves you 10% right there. CarShield.com slash Benson. Save yourself 10% and get yourself protected with the number one auto protection company in the country, CarShield. CarShield.com slash Benson. Chad Benson Show. The Chad Benson Show, where independent a la carte thinkers have a seat at the table and a voice in the dialogue. I'll have what she's having. This is Chad Benson. Could he switch teams? Very interesting. I think a lot of people are asking, you know, that of what might happen with Joe Manchin. Joe Manchin's not happy with the infrastructure deal the way it is. Joe Manchin is a much different Democrat comparatively to what's happening out there on on the Hill. But, you know, what's the domination of what you see in the in the Democrat world is uh, is from the the elites, if you will, the coastal elites, as they call them, right? big city elites. That's what you see everywhere. Most Democrats are kind of like, you know, Republicans. They're a little center right, a little center left. It's most Republicans and Democrats. They're not uber progressive. And the climate change thing that they want to put in is going to what? Destroy his state. So people are like, I can't believe he's fighting for it. See, this is what you guys need to understand. He's fighting for his political life because he's in a state that is completely red. Yet he's a blue that remains because they look at him and say, you know what? He's one of those kind of old school Democrats, right? That, you know, unions kind of Democrat. He didn't believe in 98 genders. He's not in here to, to say that, that we got to do this climate change thing or else uh, this is all that he's just old school Democrat that in today's world might be considered a conservative. And he even, uh, you know, 
hinted at, look, if if this is the way it's going to go, then maybe 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 I'll be an independent. Maybe I'll be, and it maybe I'll switch. <gasps> Could he? Keep in mind, the House is operating with a three-seat majority, uh, and in the Senate, it is 50-50. And the, the man in the middle, since the beginning, has been Senator Joe Manchin from West Virginia. And th- those climate change provisions in particular, for his coal state of West Virginia, they are so important. He is against the idea of taxing carbon. He's against anything that, in his mind, hurts uh, the industry that's long been a backbone of his state. Uh, and that has fueled a lot of anger uh, on, on the progressive left about the, the, the lack of urgency around tackling climate change. Yeah. Well, that's impossible. Why would you do that? It's about party first. No, well, for him, it's about his constituents, his state. He looks around and he's like, this is my industry. This is These are my people. Not only will they vote me out, but in doing this, this could potentially destroy my state. And you guys don't seem to care because you're more about that. The, the, you know, hey, we better do this or else the world's coming to an end. By the way, there's no model out there where that happens. There isn't. There's no model out there for any of that stuff. People could say, oh, what about? No, no, there's none. None. Even the uh, International uh, or Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change has zero model of that taking place. It's about power. It's about money. Put it all together. That's what you get. Money makes the world go round because money can buy you power and certain things like that. And if you don't think that they're using climate change to grab money, you're fooling yourself. Again, we need to find greener, better ways to 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 fuel our world cleaner. Great. If it's green, great. What if it's orange? I don't know. We're always talking about green. What if it's orange? Who knows what it is? We shouldn't crap where we eat. But to think that this guy is going to go against his people his constituents, that's not why they voted him in. Hey, let's vote somebody in that's going to destroy our state, potentially. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. The big walkout yesterday. I wonder how that went. Chad Benson Show. The Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. Yesterday was the great big walkout at Netflix. The great big walkout slash zoom out at Netflix. It's funny when you go and they had some like wide shots, you know, and they had like a drone or something flying up. There's very few people that walked out, partially because a lot of people were still working at home with Netflix. They gave people the option to do that. So... Uh, There wasn't a ton of people there. But what I loved most about it was the tolerance of the people that were there. So one guy showed up, obviously to be a bit of a troll. Welcome to the world we live in. He was also there to support Dave Chappelle, he said. Uh, And uh, it was, well, it was hilarious because one woman, and I'm going to say this, or man, because I'm not sure how they identify, The hair was very short. They had a mask on, but you can hear the tolerance. And he also has, he has a, you know, Dave Chappelle, you know, like a sign. So there's a guy supporting Dave Chappelle with a sign. And listen to the tolerance. I'm just here to say that jokes are funny, people. They took his sign away and they they slat they grabbed it from him. They broke it into bits and pieces because remember they're tolerant and tolerance is so sweet. I love. And on top of all of that, this is what I really enjoyed. She, do you hear what she's saying? She's saying repent, mf'er, repent. This is a cult. For all the people out there, so Trump's a cult. Yeah, yeah. There was a lot of people out there that bought into that QAnon Trump cult stuff. This is a cult as well. 
but it's a cult of moral. They have moral superiority as far as they're concerned. They have moral superiority. I go back to this. They're upset about jokes he made when so much of it was about him and the relationship he had as a friendship with a trans person who he gave a prime spot to that most, most established comedians would have killed to have. People who headline other places would have killed to have, but he gave it to her. But he talked about several different things. It's really pissed trans people off. But let's remember how the thing started. And he made fun of all kinds of people. Yesterday, Rogan talked about this. He had Michael Malice on talking about, uh, uh, you know, this whole thing. Have you talked to Chappelle about um, all the that he got for yeah, that last special? Yeah, a little special? bit. We texted back and forth. Look, yeah. he's not a hom homophobic or of transphobic not, yeah. person. He makes fun of himself. There's a bit in that special about him getting molested. It's just making jokes. That doesn't mean hate. This is the problem with today. If you don't have an enemy, you make an enemy. And this is a real problem with people. We, we, we look for things. Yes. We look for things. This younger generation has has everything they've ever dreamed of, right? I mean, China, we may be in a cold war. We're not in a cold war like we were with Russia, right? The war on terror is not, it's not Vietnam. Uh, it, is, it, is, it is not, you know, what was World War II, Korea. It's none of those things. There, there isn't the the, the threats and th that were out there, the existential threats. There, there's none of that. So, you've got everything at your disposal. The entitlement age is real, and everybody wants to be considered something special. You know, one of the things that conspiracy theorists jump on, and that people don't realize, and if you study any of this stuff or read about any of this stuff, is the, they want to think that they're in the know. Like, and they're in a room of 100 people. They know something that you don't know. That they know something. Like that they're just a little bit a little bit different, right? They know a little something, something that you don't. For this group of people over here that are completely, by the way, no matter what anybody says, the most tolerant people are people. You're shouting in people's faces rather than say, somebody, he said at one time, I've got free speech. And they said, no, you don't have free speech. That right there is totalitarianism. That right there is terrifying because there are people out there that have given the opportunity would shut everybody up that disagreed with them. They would. Those people, if they could, they absolutely would shut everybody up that disagreed with them. You cannot have an opinion because your opinion equates to hate. Your opinion is hate. If it's not my opinion, it's hate. That is insane. And you should be scared. 25% is all it takes to influence the masses. 25%. That's all it takes to influence the masses. 25%. No more net. 25%. If you can get 25% of people on board, the influence that you can have is huge. This is real because it's in the world we live in. This is real because it's coming to an office near you. And it's ever-changing and the goalposts are ever-moving. And that's sad. That is. Now... For some people, what was this really about? <laughs> Here's somebody who, uh, well, quite frankly, they just kind of said, eh, maybe a little bit of money. It is time to make a change. It's time to release the old and break in new. What needs to happen if the CEO at Netflix wants to make it right with trans people? Give your trans employees a raise right now. Give them a raise right now. For their hard work, for their hard labor, and for putting their trauma out for the world to see. Wait, wait, hold on a second. So because you're trans now, you deserve a raise. Well, well, well but we've got trauma. Well, well, hold on. As a kid, you guys have listened to the show, you know what happened to me. 
he does a joke at the beginning of it about a pastor and sex and all kinds of, do I deserve to, should I ask Netflix to shut it down? Should I? And then should I tell my company I deserve more money because of the trauma that I went through? Based on something that I couldn't control? I'm just curious. Yeah. Give us more money because we're special. (laughs) Dave Chappelle is special because he can get in front of 20,000 people night in and night out and make them laugh. Michael Jordan is special. Picasso was special. (laughs) Right? Right? You look at people and you're like, oh, wow. Jonas Salk, special. That's that's what special looks like, people. That's it, right? Beyonce getting in front of God knows how many people whenever she wants and tearing it up on stage, special. Well, I'm just, we deserve a raise. Sure you do. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text the program. Love hearing from you. Trans reparations. It's coming, kids. Be prepared. Are you guys ready for it? It's coming. (laughs) Speaking of stuff, jobs. What do I always say? It's the economy. Stupid. The number of Americans seeking unemployment assistance last week dropped to 290,000. It is the third straight weekly drop and the fewest number of people to apply for jobless benefits since the pandemic began. At the same time, the number of Americans receiving long-term jobless aid dropped to its lowest level of the COVID-19 crisis. There are fewer than 3 million people receiving some kind of jobless aid now. A year ago, it was nearly 24 million. Yeah, that's good. A lot of those jobs came back. It's interesting. I read some some interesting articles uh, out there. And as I was... Because uh, you hear that people can't find work. And I read an article last night where this guy's like, I took like three months just to apply for a bunch of jobs or nine weeks he said and i applied for a bunch of jobs to see if anybody would call me back and see if it was really the way they said it was and he said and all that time i only got two people to call me back and i thought well that's weird so what is it and that's i think something we should do i was telling the guys here locally i said you know what guys we need to all go out and start applying for jobs just to see if people call us back just to see if there is a need for for people over the weekend producer anthony was in town and we stopped we went to the cracker barrel and there was uh the lady was telling me how short they were she goes no we're still 35 short from the normal time of year and if you live anywhere warm you usually have snowbirds and the snowbirds have started arriving usually around october 1st and for for many of them out here they always especially in my neighborhood they always say after their thanksgiving day they get out here and that was monday so they're arriving right now and uh, in droves, and you can see it. I can see it's been ramping up. But they said we're going to be 70 people down starting essentially now. And she's like, do you want a job? And I'm like, well, no, I already have eight jobs. I don't know if I need another one. So I don't know if that's real or not. But look, the jobs, are they available? I think they are. I mean, you know, Amazon's hiring a hundred and something thousand, you know, United States Postal Service, UPS, Target, Kohl's, Macy's, all hiring in the tens of hundreds of thousands of people. So I think those are there. And are other jobs there? Maybe not. Maybe it's overblown. We shall see, though. We shall see. But it's always about the economy, stupid. As the economy goes, people have a smile. Even in that thing with that that, that lady talking about what what did she ask for? She asked for more money. You know what make me feel better? More money. <laughs> I've been wronged. We'll give you more money. I'm fine. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text the program. Love hearing from each and every single one of you. Raycon, best earbuds around. I love them. I wear them all the time. Probably going to hit some golf balls later. What do you think I'm going to do? Put in my Raycons. Absolutely incredible the so last night i stayed in a hotel i was so exhausted i finally said you know what i'm staying in a hotel tonight because i've been going home pretty much every day and i went i stayed in a hotel and it was i'm like sometimes you get loud you know you never know and i just want to get a good night's sleep so i threw my raycons on and fell asleep they didn't hurt my ears which is fantastic i gotta listen to my audiobook as i fell asleep and it was 
just so nice. Better sound quality, better design. There's just nothing better than knowing that your earbuds aren't going to fall out. They're not going to hurt your ears. And when you listen, man, the control that you can have on these things is out of this world. Right now, 45-day happiness guarantee, no stems, no wires, easily the best out there. And for the price, they start under 70 bucks. You will get nothing better. Get your Raycons now. Buyraycon.com slash Chad saves you 15%. Again, 45-day happiness guarantee. No supply chain issues. Great sleek design. You will love these. Buyraycon.com slash Chad. Buyraycon.com slash Chad. Chad Benson Show. If you're part of the politically exhausted majority, don't fear. Your time to be validated and rejuvenated is here. Wake up. It's the Chad Benson Show. It is Thursday night. You know what that means. Time for me to get my first pick in of the weekend. Currently, I'm 62 and 32. That's pretty awesome, guys. I'm not going to lie to you. That is pretty awesome. <laughs> So tonight's game is going to be interesting. Not quite sure what to expect. you got two teams that are struggling, the Browns and the Broncos. Broncos started great. They've lost three in a row. They're at Cleveland tonight. Cleveland was one of those teams. People thinking this is it, right? Like this is it. This could be the year. Absolutely depleted. Absolutely depleted. Everybody's injured. So, I don't know. I, it's a, it's a toss-up tonight. I'm going to go. I picked the Broncos. I mean, I picked the Browns. I don't know why. I just thought they're at home. Uh, you know, I mean, y- you've got a situation uh, where you've got Case Keenum, who is going to be the quarterback, it looks like, for for the uh, the Browns. Uh, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be interesting, you know. Like so, here here's the this is the injury report for the Browns. Baker make Baker uh, Mayfield labrum, Nick Chubb calf, Kareem Hunt calf. Uh, their linebacker joke has an ankle. Uh, Odell shoulder. Wide receiver Landry uh, has a knee injury. Clowney ankle chest knee. Conklin knee. Tackle Willis ankle. Center Treader knee. And Jackson, several of those are game time decisions, but your three big offensive outside of your wide receivers, they're gone. So we'll find out. But I got the Browns tonight. I'll give you the rest of the picks tomorrow. That is that's crazy. And Case Keenum's interesting. It's a guy who a few years ago took them all the way to the NFC uh, Championship game with uh, Minnesota. Right, and they had the Minnesota miracle. I think a lot of people thought Case Keenum was going to get this opportunity to do something. They didn't. They went and brought in in Minnesota the other guy, Kurt Cousins, and they just kind of let him flounder around. He went over, and and you know, it just who knows? Who knows? Who knows what ends up happening? But fresh start tonight for him. So I'm going to go with the Browns. Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Tweet at us, text the program. Love hearing from every single one of you. I do. Feel free to fire tweets at me. I want you guys to understand something. Okay? I want you guys to get this. Take a deep breath and understand. The holidays are here. Shopping time is here. You're going to get your stuff. That's a big thing. And it's funny because I've seen the White House take a kind of like, well, it's no big deal if you don't get your, you know, your treadmill attitude, you know, Jen Psaki and them. It's not about whether or not you get your toys for your kids. I mean, yeah, some of it is that. But think about all the businesses, because if I'm not getting something I need or want, then that means I'm not giving my dollars to some place that could probably use it. That's the effect that that has. 
Adobe's annual Digital Economy Index is predicting that this will be a record-setting online holiday shopping season. Sales are expected to hit $207 billion. That's 10% higher than last year. Buy Now, Pay Later is becoming more popular, allowing shoppers to free up cash for the holidays. And with worries about shipping delays, more shoppers are expected to opt for in-store or curbside pickup. Discounts will be offered earlier than usual in some cases by the end of October, but Cyber Monday is still still expected to be the busiest online shopping day. Dar- so, and why they're doing some things like that, because you're going to understand, you, you'll see because of all of the backup that is going on in the ports and all the stuff, some of these places will be able to ship directly from other places and get. it's going to be easier to fly a singular thing here than a large thing. Buy now, pay later. Uh, you know, or put it on layaway, that's going away. Well, I don't think Walmart's going to have it this year. I don't know Target's not going to have it this year because they don't know what they're going to have, and they'd rather have that out on the shelf where they know it's going to sell immediately. So, yeah, you know what? Cyber is going to be bigger this year because they're going to have availability in many cases where they're not going to have it in stores. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter you can tweet, you can text, you can do all of that stuff. It's the Chad Benson Show. This is the Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. Ah. To vaccinate or not to vaccinate? Vaccination, again, let's let's go over vaccination. You get the flu shot. You get the shot that is the COVID shot. It's kind of what it is. But what went from it'll be a choice to will never mandate is now mandation for everybody or else in certain places. Not everywhere. Some states are like, no. And some states are like, no, we're not going to let you mandate. And you've just you've got you've got the extremes on both ends. But let's be real. You know, one state will say we're mandating, you know, everything here for all of these kinds of workers. And this is what you have to do or else. And the other state will say, well, we're mandating you can't do those kind of things, but you should be able to have personal choice in the matter. If you own a business, you should be able to do it. There are issues, though, because you do have firemen. You do have police people. I mean, fire people. I don't even know what you call people. Whatever doesn't fire person, police person, to not offend people. And you're getting now situations where you're seeing police and fire men and women stand up and say, we're not going to do this. And the ultimatums are out there. And it's it's crazy. Seattle's one of those places where there's lots of issues going on and already a hot mess. Remember, let's go back, right? Let's just step way back. We had the summer of love that ended up being rape and murder inside of the Chaz Chop. Remember that? Oh. Police weren't allowed to do anything. They 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 ceded not only a couple blocks to these people. They also gave up their uh, uh, when they stormed the precinct there. And now they're fighting back. They're like, nah, we don't know if we want to be pushed into this. And by the way, there are several police officers I talk to. They're vaccinated. They just don't feel it should be mandated, and they don't want to play the game of show up all the time. And this here's the other thing: Are we going to mandate the boosters now? Things we don't know. Are we going to mandate it? You take it every single year. Is there that threshold? All of these things are never answered. It's just do this now or else kind of a scenario. And in places where crime is rising and people are worried, well, crime is not right. No, murder still counts as crime. Violence still counts as crime. And just because you think stealing something shouldn't count as crime doesn't mean that the people who own the stores are thrilled by it. 
Seattle's police department, they're facing a massive staffing shortage. 300 police officers uh, left during the defund the police movement. And now more are being forced out of their jobs because of this COVID-19 mandate. So what's going to happen to your business? Okay, a lot of business is going to close down and I have to be protecting myself by myself. I don't feel safe. I can't sleep well. Every night I wake up and it's like, okay, I'm going to go check my store. Two, three o'clock in the morning, four o'clock, five o'clock, because I don't know what's going to happen. Well, you're a bad person and you should love that they're doing this. And police are evil anyway. That's the way the city council come out. You're a bad person anyways. You probably have all this money hidden back there. Those people have every right to come rob your store. People, they don't care. They just break into your store to take even small things. If you don't have anything, just take whatever. Why? Because there's no police officer Has... in the street. Well, it's no big deal. Again, that's the way they look at it. Well, Chad, it's just, again, it's the way they look at it is it's no big deal. Right? You're, you're blowing it out of proportion. You're blowing this. That that's not real. That's not real. And if you watch or look at the news, they'll frame it in ways, depending on what you're watching. You know, because they're closing Walgreens in San Francisco, and people are saying, "Oh well, that's not because of the crime, and there really isn't any crime up there. It's not a big deal." And then uh, they were going to close some of these stores, anyways. No, they announced they were going to close a bunch of stores a while ago. Some of those stores weren't on this list. They decided to go, it's too expensive and we lose too much money. We're paying too much for to rent this place and we're losing too much to make it worthwhile to stick around. Portland, already having issues because it's a never-ending protest in Portland, as we all know. All the damage done over the weekend. The cops did nothing. Well, why didn't they do something? What did one person say, one cop say, why didn't you, go, why didn't you guys call the social workers? You don't want us here. You, don't, you, you take away any opportunity for us to do our jobs. So why didn't you call the social worker? Oh, that's not being very nice. It's, it's frustrating. And now you've got the mandates on top of that. And that is not going to be something I think that's going to play out well. I think a lot of people thought everybody would just jump in line and do whatever anybody ask apparently you don't understand the firefighters and you don't understand the people who work in law enforcement they're asking other questions you know covid's kill more firefighters than than out in the streets yeah but they've made a choice what's wrong with their choice they're also dealing with a lot more people than the average person on his last day as a spokane washington firefighter tim archer recorded this message I'm wrapping up my last shift after 20 years. I'll be fired tonight by the city of Spokane. Bravo. He joins about 20 Spokane. other colleagues who have also been relieved for resisting the state's vaccine mandate. Why didn't you comply? I really felt like this is in violation of the civil rights that God has given us. Oh, he's a, he's a, he's a, he's a Jesus freak, so we should just automatically, he should probably get it and die. Firefighters and police officers in cities like Chicago and Los Angeles are also being given the ultimatum. Get vaccinated or lose your job. <laughs> Officials say vaccine mandates for city workers are necessary to protect the community. But in many cities, rising crime is the primary public safety issue. Now coupled with a lack of policing. We'll have uh, slower responses. There'll be case backlogs. You're going to see less troopers responding to critical incidents. Well, that's no big deal. Again, that's no big deal to the powers that be. That's no big deal. Whatever happened to testing? I thought the testing was going to be on. on the, and I go back again. I highly recommend you get the damn shot. I do. I highly recommend it. Talk to your doctor. But, yes, natural immunity is great, but... Eh, it's it's if you can get both and you you great knock yourself out i highly recommend getting it never been an anti-vaxxer never will be an anti-vaxxer i like science but i also understand that you know the flu shot is 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 will protect you from getting the flu in many cases about 50 percent on average and let's be real if you do get the flu, it's it rarely do you get the flu the way that other people get the flu. I highly recommend. I got zero problems with that. I'm not one of these people that's the mandates. 
I don't. And they've all seemed to be moving. It went from, hey, we're going to give people the options to do this to now this. With never-ending sunset in sight. Never. Ever. Ending sunset. That frustrates me. Should frustrate you. Because I thought that was part of the deal, right? We were going to, if you didn't want to get the shot, you could test once a week. But now it's like, hmm. And I still think if if we're going to test one, we should test all. If you're really serious about it. Because if you can get this and give it, even though you've had it, and you might be now asymptomatic, but you could still give it to people, well then, why aren't you being tested? 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us, text the program. Yesterday, Biden trying to sell his... Uh, his whatever it is, infrastructure. It's funny because he's selling infrastructure. Trickle-down economics has always failed. It hadn't built this country. By the way, just to let you know, trickle-down economics in the capitalist society or trickle-down economics in the government. Because there's two infrastructure bills. One of them is trickle-down from the government because, you know, they know better. And the other one is essentially an actual infrastructure bill. (laughs) He's outselling the infrastructure bill. I don't think you're going to get much complaint from either side on this. you got 16 Republicans in the Senate who have already voted for it. They won't take it up in the House because they want this agenda that has to do with uber progressivism. And so that's what they're – they want that trickle down. It's not the trickle down economics as far as people don't – oh, it just doesn't work. No, what what it is is (laughs) – You want to be the one that trickles it down. You want to be the one in control of it. That's what you want. Because trickle-down economics over here, this person's not voting for you based on the trickle of that down. This person's voting on whether or not they want to work at a place. Over here it trickles down. You may think to yourself, well, if I trickle down it just enough, maybe they'll see that I'm the best person for them. Continue, sir. Sorry, sorry. Start over again. Trickle-down economics has always failed. It hadn't built this country. You know who built this country. Union people. People who, in fact, can make a decent, hard wage. Yeah, they did. And unions are, they're looking at this opportunity across the board with the Democrats, because I think they feel like this is their best opportunity at this moment in time to get in there uh, that they may ever have again. To, to, to strengthen themselves. I got zero problems with that. But you're out pitching this bill that everybody's on board with, but at the end of the day, it's not that bill that's struggling. It's the other one. The big issue for progressives is climate. We need to make sure that we have 50% reduction by 2030. That's the president's goal. Yeah. But he's pitching... One, when the reality is, if you want to sell people, you're going to have to go out and sell them on the other one, especially in places like West Virginia and Arizona. If you're that concerned about getting Mansion and Cinema to jump over, then you better go to West Virginia and you better go to Arizona, where those constituents are. Because otherwise, you're just selling something that's already been bought. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show your Twitter. Tweet at us. My pillow. My pillow. Has Giza Dream Sheets. They do. Giza Dream Sheets are awesome. I have my Giza Dream Sheets. I wear them. I'm kidding. I don't wear them. I sleep in them every night. Oh, we just got, so we got new ones the other day. And I, I tell you guys this. So if you guys know what long staple cotton is, it's grown in a few places. But where they get theirs from is is right in the middle of the Mediterranean. Sahara Desert, Mediterranean Nile. It's grown right there. And it is incredible. It's almost got the sateen with, with the way they put it together, like a feel. But what I love about this, and I continue, continue to tell people is, it's not going to shrink on you where you can't get back on the bed. And that is important because I have bought really what I think is, oh, these sheets are amazing. And then you wash them and like, they don't fit anymore. You won't have that with these. 60-day money-back guarantee. 
just the way they put this together, absolutely otherworldly. You're going to love this. The best sheets you'll ever sleep on. You're never going to sleep too hot. You're never going to sleep too cold. Right now, they got the BOGO going on. Buy one, get one free. Go to MyPillow.com. See all the other amazing discounts they have. Remember, 60 day money-back guarantee with these. Deep discounts on everything. But you get the buy one, get one free on the Giza Dream Sheets. Make great Christmas gifts. And there's no supply chain issues. Yeah. MyPillow.com, promo code Benson. Use it right there. MyPillow.com. Go up to the uh, radio listener square, type in promo code Benson, and take advantage of all the discounts. MyPillow.com, promo code Benson. Chad Benson Show. Deep states? Uh, No. Deep doo-doo? Yeah. The Chad Benson Show. Hot. Five, four, three, two, one, zero, ignition, liftoff. Now it's time to find out what's trending. What's trending? Yeah, what does that mean? I mean something, right? Like it's trending on the old internet. What's trending? Let us take a peek and find out what's trending. Ah, so today, big trending on the Google Tawny Katain, we finally know what killed her, the voluptuous star of Bachelor Party and the 80s music video with Great White. Here I am again on my own. Uh, it was confirmed yesterday, her passing away at age 59, happened five months ago. Uh, dilated cardiomyopathy. She had heart disease, essentially. Mild coronary uh, atherosclerosis. She had several medications in her. Essentially, I think she had been one of those situations where she had lived, if you will. Biggest thing trending over the last 24 hours, Brian Laundry, Partial human remains found near a backpack that contained his information as far as like his, some of his goods. He, I guess not quite sure what was in there. They said there's a diary in there, but there were other things. Uh, it was underwater, and I guess it had just receded, and his family, mother and father, uh, said, oh, yeah, wait, there's one other place you should look. And sure enough, they led them straight to where the stuff was. So, which is, I think, a bit odd. But partial human remains. They said it'll take several weeks to identify for sure. Uh, but if you're talking partial, could a gator have gotten him? That is a, a possibility. And he may have committed suicide, and the gator just picked at what they found, if that is even him. Maybe. Nicholas Cruz yesterday pled guilty to the Parkland shooting. Happened in 2018. Valentine's Day. Uh, and uh, man, that guy. So uh, 17 counts of murder, 17 counts of attempted murder. Pled guilty to all of them. And he had some weird things about, you know, marijuana and racism and uh, just. Just, uh, I don't think he's all there, but I don't think he wanted to die. So that's why he did that. I think they had already cut some sort of deal, some way, shape, or form. Head on over to Twitter. Dave Chappelle trending after yesterday in the Netflix walkout. In and out Burgers in San Francisco being closed there in, in Contra Costa County as well because they won't comply with being the vaccine police. They said that's not their role. In that, and Condoleezza Rice also trending. She got very interesting. She was on the View yesterday, and she talked a bit about critical race theory. We're going to touch on that because I think what she said was was very interesting. And I think if there's anybody who really said what I think most people are thinking without the emotion of it, because remember, once people get emotional about stuff, the the wheels come off the bus fast. 323-538-2423 at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. It's the Chad Benson Show. The Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, 
independent life. This is Chad Benson. Uh, Media can do a lot of things. And again, I'm very critical of my business. I know there are guys out there in particular who play this game that's completely disingenuous. This week, you know, I mean, I heard, you know, the likes of, of Dennis Prager. And, you know, some others out there that, that it's 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 a game and you got to understand what's real, what's not real. You know, they're 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 playing a part in in a game, if you will. And this is their part. I'm going to go extra tough at this. I'm going to do extra tough at that. I'm going to I'm, I'm going to throw the, the you guys listen to this and, and, and I'm going to I did this for you kind of and and. They play that, and that's disingenuous in many cases. I mean, some have lived it. You know, the COVID side is a perfect example. But it's some of it. It's the media on the other side. It's just, it's the, it's just as guilty of being full of it. Yesterday, I saw this headline. And I even pointed out to several people here, because headlines are so telling. Remember, it's all about grabbing people's attention. And one of the, uh, I think it was one of the congressmen who was a doctor said that he had prescribed ivermectin to his some of his patients, and and uh, along with you know other things when it comes to this. But if you read the article, the first thing you see is it's not ivermectin, the drug that you would get from a doctor as a human being. They put the the uh, like uh, the one that you would go buy from you know get from a vet or from a tax shop in the thing, as if that's what he's he's doing. And I'm like, God, that is so disingenuous. But the people out there who believe that everybody's out there going and getting, you know, ivermectin from the tax store, and there have been some people that have tried some stuff, and, you know, but it's, that was totally overblown, and they got caught, you know, the media for BSing about that. Oh, there was 20 million overdoses or whatever. What did Rolling Stone and Rachel Maddow tweeted about all the overdoses in, in Arkansas or somewhere, and they're like, no. Never any, you know, but that's... So much of it is about grabbing your attention. It's not about telling you the truth of stuff. And you follow the money. Race is a perfect place where you can go, are we really in a position where race is just this is the worst time in human history? I mean, yesterday, was it New York City declared race, uh, 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 you know, uh, public health emergency? Think about that for a second. A public health emergency? Really? Really? Is it really? Yes, it is. And over the last several months, this has become not only a, 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 this is a culture crisis for a lot of people. Yesterday, uh, Condoleezza Rice was on The View. I feel for her, but hey. She went on The View, and she gave maybe the, the best answer, an explanation about critical race theory and what she went through. And I'll play the whole thing. It's about a minute long. But it was as spot on as you're going to get in delivering how some of this stuff is just insane and that we shouldn't shy away from it. And I thought to myself, like, if you want to find out how we should talk about it, how we should view it, and how we should empower from it, this is the answer issue of critical race theory and what is and is not being taught. Uh, I come out of an academic uh, institution and uh, this is a, something that academics debate, what is the role of race and so forth. And, and let me be very clear, I grew up in segregated Birmingham, Alabama. Mm -hmm. um, I couldn't go to a movie theater or to a restaurant with my parents. I went to segregated schools till we moved to Denver. Mm -hmm. My parents never thought I was going to grow up in a world without prejudice, but they also told me that's somebody else's problem, not yours. You're going to overcome it. And you are going to be anything you want to be. And that's the message that I think we ought to be sending to kids. One of the worries that I have about the way that we're, we're talking about race is that it either seems so big that somehow white people now have to feel guilty for everything that happened in the past. I, I mm -hmm. don't think that's very productive. Or black people have to feel disempowered by mm -hmm. race. I would like black kids to be completely empowered, to know that they are beautiful in their blackness. Mm -hmm. But in order to do that, I don't have to make white kids feel bad for being white. So somehow this is a conversation that has gone in the wrong direction. Absolutely. 
you will get it. No other explanation I find anywhere better than that. Empowerment. Politics and politicians, they don't want to empower people. And for many years, the right has really ignored the, you know, black Americans. Because, well, they're not in my district or, well, they're, you know, it's just like, uh, you know, the Democrats have it sewed up. And and so, you know, we're just going. And that was an absolute mistake. And on the other side. The left has looked and said, we've got a built in voter block here. And as long as we continue to make sure that, that they know that we're here to protect them, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. But that's OK that they're victims because we'll take care of them. They're going to continue to 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 roll that way. You know, like voter ID and, and voter, you know, I mean, look, I look at Republicans and I see all the stuff that's going on with 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 voter issues across the country. And I do ask some questions about some of the stuff that the, the you know, the right is doing. Well, we're going to crack down on this. And we're going to crack down on that. I was like, well, well, hold on a second. We didn't have any problems before this. But now we got problems because Trump said there was problems and the right said there was problems. And it's funny because in a lot of states, the right picked up seats, the right continued to hold power, and they did well down ticket. But now you want to pull things. I think it's a fair question to ask. And on the other side, you look over to the left and you say, you know what? Stop telling people who are black they don't know how to use the Internet and they can't find a place to get an ID, which we know is a bunch of crap. It isn't. You empower. I think one of the reasons everybody's always afraid, it's like, I always think it's, it's an abusive relationship. You see a guy who, uh, or you know, who, who, who for all intents and purposes is, is punching above his weight when it comes to looks and how nice this person is. But th- what do they do? They separate them from their family and friends. They're the only ones that will ever love them. And they're never really good enough. And don't ever, you know, and then eventually they do wake up and go, well, hold on a second. I am way better and deserve way better than this. I am better than this. And I think for the left, it's like they look and they think, well, what happens if, you know, the 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 black community starts to realize, oh, wait, I'm not a victim. No. But you've continued to tell me I'm a victim. And you continue to tell me and the, the, the white people don't. They're 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 not the ones the reasons that we're. Because you're white, and you're telling me that white people basically are the devil in some ways, but you want me to trust you. That was an articulate, brilliant way of just surmising the critical race baloney. We should talk about race. We need to be far more open about it, without fears of being canceled, without fears of 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 of, you know, children sitting in a room and being segregated and then one group being told essentially the reason that you're never going to be anything is because the other kids on the other side of the room, that's their, that's why you're never going to be anything and that they're the reason that we don't need any of that. We should have open, honest discussions, but we need to have it in full. This is where we were, a stain on our history that is absolutely awful. And by the way, it wasn't just us, it was the world. And this is where we have come to. Where we were, where we've been, and where we are. But you won't. Because at the end of the day, you follow the money. And where does the money lead you? It leads you into a new world to make more money off an issue. You follow the money, you'll find the real science. You follow the money, you'll find the reality of... Anything, victimhood, whether it's the trans issue, you don't think GLAD's making money off all this stuff, whether it is it, it, it is the, the, the Pfizer's and the Moderna's and stuff of the world who, who, yeah, they're making money, and I do not begrudge them for that, but I also realize it's really nice when you can twist the arms of all kinds of politicians, you get the media 
in on as well because you're buying tons of spots and making sure that your product is mandated. That's pretty awesome. It's all kind of you follow the money and you'll find out the truth. 323-538-2423 at Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text the program. Love hearing from you. So Halloween, not too far away. Tomorrow we start a big countdown of horror movies going all the way till next Friday. So you know how to do it. I'm going to give you 10 through 5 or 10 through 6 tomorrow and then starting Monday, 5, 4, 3, 2 and culminating with the number one on ne- you know next Friday for the uh, Halloween season, if you will, because next Sunday, not this one, the following Sunday is going to be, yes, kids, Halloween. <laughs> But after Halloween, we have turkey time. That's right, turkey time. So, what are you going to do? This turkey day, you may be paying more. And a variety of issues from climate change to the pandemic. So, climate change is the reason. (laughs) Follow the truth. Follow the money. You'll find out the truth. I'm sorry, I didn't know climate change is the reason I'm not getting turkeys. This Turkey Day, you may be paying more, and a variety of issues from climate change to the pandemic may be partly to blame. According to food analyst editor Phil Limpert, We have a major shortage of truck drivers, so being able to get the birds to the supermarkets are going to be a problem. Experts say your best bet may be to buy from a local turkey farm. So, climate change. Still, why? Why did you say that? Like, so we're not getting turkey. It has nothing to do with supply chain. Well, it does, kind of, because we don't have the truck drivers. We also don't have people who are out there that were working in many of these production factories for for the meat market. So that's also an issue. But, okay, but tell me about the climate change. Well, we had the cold snap. Okay, we had a cold snap. Again, tell me how the climate change is the reason. We're not getting our turkeys. By the way, they're saying climate change is the reason you may not get your turkeys partially. But, oh, by the way, we need a bunch of people to drive these giant diesel trucks around. Climate change. Come, 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 come. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text the program. Rough Greens, R-U-F-F Greens dot com slash Chad. What are you going to get? You get yourself a free bag of Rough Greens. You cover the cost of shipping. Vitamins, minerals, probiotics, omega-3, 6, 9. All this incredible stuff that you sprinkle on top like a supplement that you would take of your dog's food. And you watch what happens. First of all, they're going to love it. Secondly, their energy is going to go through the roof. When That is great. They are, uh, are going to feel better. Their hips, for me, my dogs with the struggle with their hips, especially my older dogs, no problem anymore. The arthritic hips virtually gone, bouncier healthier, happier, you are going to see a huge difference. And this time of year, especially for me, with allergy season here, it affected the dogs. Guess what? Our dogs have no issues with allergies this year. Try Rough Greens. Try it before you buy it. R-U-F-F-Greens.com slash Chad. You get a bag for free. Cover the cost of shipping. Or you can call 833-MY-DOG-77. 833-MY-DOG-77. Rough Greens makes any pet food better. Chad Benson Show. Let the Washington Beltway strangle you. This is where the exhausted majority comes to refuel, realign, and reevaluate. This is Chad Benson. Now, sometimes in life you want to impress your friends. Go to school, you maybe buy them lunch or whatever it is. You tell a couple funny jokes. Maybe you do a trick at dodgeball. Like, oh my God, Jimmy's awesome. Little Stevie's great, or Shannon's really cool, whatever it is. You're trying to impress your friends. You're doing stuff that go, oh, wow, that guy's super impressive. She's awesome. And, but you're young, right? This kid, he decided, I'm going to impress my friends indeed because I'm going to make it rain. A six year old in Lehigh Acres brought 
$16,000 to school in his backpack. Most kids would show off the cash, but not this one. He started handing it out. This school day felt more like Christmas morning to some students. Thanks to a six-year-old boy making it rain on his classmates. You never know what they're going to do. Now that first grader wanted to invest in his classmates by digging into his backpack, pulling out hundreds, fifties, twenties, and ten dollar bills, and then just giving them away. That's what you do. You make it rain. He was there to make it rain. He's buying friendships. He's solidifying friendships. Maybe there's a bully in the classroom. You want to get on a good side. Maybe you don't give the bully any money, but you make sure that everybody else has a couple bucks in their pocket. That way, just in case the bully get you're taking everybody on now, right? Because as we all know nowadays, first grade, second grade, kindergarten, whatever it is, it could be hell. So you want to make sure, hey, we got to take care of this, right? I'm going to make sure that everybody's got a little money on their books, right? Buy a little protection just in case hopscotch gets out of control. $16,000 to be exact. That's a lot of cash for a kid to be walking around with. First graders carrying around big bills got the attention of staff and deputies. I would have asked where did you get it and where do we need to return it? LCSO determined the boy took the money from his mom. Definitely want to know that the money didn't come from any foul play. That's a lot of money to have in cash. I love the fact. Why are deputies there? Just out of curiosity. Because... You brought more than $10,000 here. It's cash, so we're going to have to come and take it. How did he get the cash? Right? How did he get it? LCSO says the boy's mom wasn't cleaning all that money, but rather cleaning homes for that money in her profession as a housekeeper. That's hard-earned money. Usually. Some feel it's just a funny misunderstanding. My kids stumbled upon cash that so wouldn't be mine. But not every parent is laughing. You know, just in case like a kid has money in their backpack and they don't think about it, you know, you would want to be able to return it. But it is making some secure their secret stash. I'd be devastated if anything went missing from my hidden stash. Yeah, sixteen thousand uh, bucks is a lot of cash. Mom saved it up. She'd been working hard. And some of the parents, the way they act, is kind of like really like, huh? Like sixteen grand? Yeah, you're not making that. So I, 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 so at first when I saw it, I thought, you know what? It's Lee. It's it. It, it was at Lehigh Acres, right? So I'm gonna I'm gonna Google Lehigh Acres, and 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 for a second I'm like, okay, so let's is this one of those? Because it sounds like this could be something big, right? Like this kid, I mean, that's his allowance. I don't know. No, like the average medium income is like forty eight thousand per household. So. uh Mom hat. She was working hard. Not saying anything other than that. She wasn't cleaning the money, as they would like to say. She was saving up. A lot of people do. They still don't trust banks. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text the program. Love hearing from all of you. Chad Benson Show. This is the Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. Doom scrolling. You've probably never heard of it. But we as people, human beings, we're arguably easier drawn to things that are more negative. And when you live in a world of echo chambers nowadays, affirmation instead of information, and always wanting to, to, to see what the other side is evil in doing and vice versa people head to it and so much of it is baloney on both sides they take something and they blow it up to be bigger than it is uh and and that takes away from the real issues that are out there and doom scrolling is very real and some of it is it's it's essentially ingrained in our brains 
Tell me a little bit about why people are engaging in doom scrolling. Who are these doom scrollers? The tough thing is that our brains are really wired to scan the environment all the time. We are hyper vigilant for challenges or threats that evolved when the world was pretty simple and the only thing you had to check was everything right around you. Of course, now that we have the media, news, internet, it seems that worldwide keep track of these things. And, but really, to some degree, it's not helping because most of that information isn't relevant to our individual situation. Yeah, most of it's not. Like, that's why we, we, we have made up enemies. And, you know, back in the day when we scanned for our environment, it's because we were either going to look for food or we were going to be food. So... That was kind of, and as we've gone on and on and on, here we are now, and we scan our environment. You don't have to go outside and you look around. All you have to do is look on the internet. And doom scrolling is not just about like, hey, it's the bait and switch on you know the media over here, or this newspaper said that, or whatever. What it is 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 this is an everyday life. How many of you have Googled your your medical condition, gone to WebMD, and within three hours you're wondering if they could save the leg because you have a scratch? Like that's like we we inherently go there. We're we're inherently negative. It's easier to be negative than positive. That's why Yelp was invented. Yelp wasn't invented to tell everybody how great food was. Yelp was invented so people could bitch about where not to go. That's the way I've always looked at Yelp. I don't think it's ghoulish. I think it really is more survival based. You know, out on the savannah, if you saw signs of something that was dangerous, you wanted to notice it and avoid it. And that kind of tendency is still working. Now, if you see a bad news story, what's the first thing you think? Oh, I don't go out at that time of night or to that ATM machine. Or you know, you're looking for reasons to see whether it's something that is going to harm you or not. Absolutely. How many of you, so I'm 50, how many of you, when you see somebody right around your age that's died, you Google it and you think to yourself, oh, did the person drop dead of a heart attack? Did they have an aneurysm? Did they, oh, good, they died of a drug overdose. Whew. That's, you know, I don't do drugs, so I'm good. But it's not just about that kind of stuff. There's so many other things. And so you got a really smart lady here. Her name is Mary uh, McGodden Castle. She's a clinical, you know, a psychologist. And she talks about, not only that kind of doom scrolling, but the other side of stuff. And like we talked about with the, the media, you know, this guy over here who is a congressperson is also a doctor says, yeah, I've, I've prescribed people uh, I've, ivermectin before, which, oh, you can't say that kind of stuff. What did the media put up? They put up the horse version of ivermectin in the paste, in the box. And as we all know, there's ivermectin you can get from your doctor not your vet, but that was more about trying to catch people and drag them in. Affirmation, not information, where you can go. <laughs> and it becomes kind of an echo chamber because the media wants to catch our attention and get it advertisers. So they really push the things that are sensational. We turn to them and then it, we all start to assume that those things are actually even more common or more terrible often than the situation really is. Yeah. And that's, uh, I think, who, who do we have on it? Was it, uh, was it Malcolm Gladwell we were talking about? The, 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 the safety bubble, right? Like, so when we see, uh, you know, a school shooting or somebody that does something horrible, the, the safety bubble has been breached, and we think that it's happening 24-7, and there's all of these uh, things that go on because it is the the – the safety bubble that is so much greater than we realized how much better things are. It's like, it's never been, it's never been this good in our lives. It's never been this good every day. We're more technologically advanced. We're sending regular people into space, not people that train their entire lives. Yes. Some of them are very wealthy. And a few randomly got picked. But by and large, we're sending people into space. We're doing things that are incredible. We're 3D printing homes. We're doing stuff that is amazing. But if you watch the news all day, that doesn't sell. It's always talk about, you know, conflict never sells. Truth doesn't sell. 
because truth is going to come with, you know, you know, just regular old data numbers and it's not exciting. What sells is the story around all of that. And we're addicted to that. We're addicted to, you know, and we're not even addicted very long anymore. Hence the reason why. Remember, it started with uh, YouTube. And it was, everything was, you know, and then it was, then it was uh, uh, long form. And then it was, well, we'll, how about, you know, it was, you know, it was 128, you know, characters. And then it was, and now we're down to TikTok, where it's like 10 seconds, a minute, then you're out onto something else. It's just consumption of data and all that stuff. But what catches our eyes? Oh, we're going to go to that. And we want it quick. We want it fast. We want to consume it. We don't want the. We don't want any of the stuff. Around. We want Cliff Notes version and make it crazy so I can pay more attention. COVID's a particularly interesting case because it's a it's a disaster, but it's not one that is limited by geography, and it's not one that is has occurred and now we're recovering. You know, a hurricane or something else. You say, okay, that's the worst of it. Now what do we do? This is a rolling disaster, and so as you say, you might not have COVID right now. It doesn't mean you won't have it or it won't spike. And from a risk point of view, it's a scary thing, and that lack of control and understanding is what's making people the most stressed. Yeah. Because the media tells you all day, remember what uh, uh, we, had, we were talking about, Bill Maher, talking about the insanity of the, what the Democrats believe as far as the COVID numbers, according to the, to, to the, to the study that was like 50% of them believe that, you know, essentially, if you got this, you were going to go to the hospital and, you know, and, and they started going down the numbers and it was less than 1%. And, and but the media portrays it that way right now they've got the new right have you seen this seen what's going on the uk spiking again and there's some sort of new variant out there because they know fear sells right this was the beauty of trump trump was a selling machine for the media he was both the villain and on the other side for some he was the hero but both sides use that and they sensationalize that in reality what were we talking about a lot with Trump? He, he called what country a blank hole? Who cares? What does that have to do with anything? He did what? He said what? He tweeted about, again, what does it have to do with anything? What does that have to do with anything here? Because it's so much easier to look at a person and, and, and have a disdain for the person and I've always been an action person. Show me what the action is that is going on and what you're getting done. The rest of it means nothing to me. This person's a horrible person. He says bad things. She says bad things. Okay. But did they get their job done? Yes. Okay. Well, that's, that's, that's your opinion of that person, uh, but it means nothing to me or to a lot of other people. All I care about is action. But the human side of us is drawn to conflict because it's so much easier going through a day to day politician's day where they're working on the finance committee and they're talking about, you know, certain things and that regulations and this, that that would bore people. But watching AOC or Ted Cruz tweet and talk and both sides can run to their corners, take a cut out of something and sensationalize it. That's going to get more viewers. Right. Then sitting in the transportation secretary's office or, you know, the ag farm bills, which are actions. Three, two, three, five, three, eight, twenty four, twenty three at Chad Benson shows your Twitter tweet, text. Love hearing from every single one of you. Check me out at getter, G-E-T-T-R dot com. You can go there. I know yesterday was it uh, Trump is debuting, I guess, Early next year, he's got some sort of social media thing. Former President Donald Trump is preparing to launch his own social media network called Truth Social. Trump says he's creating the network to stand up to the tyranny of big tech. The former president adding, we live in a world where the Taliban has a huge presence on Twitter, yet your favorite American president has been silenced. This is unacceptable. Since January's attack on the Capitol, major social media sites have banned Trump, citing fears he could incite further violence. Get over it. 
Shouldn't have been banned. But all that being said, <laughs> that's a horrible name. Truth Social. That is a horrible name. And it was already hacked. <laughs> it was already hacked. Did not go. So far has not gone to plan. Not gone to plan. Uh, Jason Miller's got his G-E-T-T-R getter. Uh, Phil's always asked me, how is it? I said, it seems pretty cool. Uh, you know, I wasn't a big fan of Parlor. I thought there was too many, you know, to be honest, a little, little too many uh, nut jobs out there for me. And, uh, you know, and Twitter's just, you know, Twitter's just Twitter. But so far, you know, I mean, you go there and you got to take it for what it is, right? Take it, take it with a grain of salt. These are 99.9% of the people that are on there you're never going to meet, see, or ever run into. So, and they can fight over anything. Doesn't matter. Sky is blue. No, it's not. Here we go. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us. They probably wanted to call it Patriot Social or something like that, but somebody already taken that. I bet you. I bet you. Good put Patriot in the name, and some there's going to be a group of people that will always join it. Always. Raycon, best earbuds around. Absolutely incredible. You will love these earbuds. So amazing. The sound quality, the design. It is just, it's otherworldly. When you think about, you go out and you're going to get two, three, four hundred dollar earbuds that aren't going to have the same feel, the same fit. You're not going to be able to do as much with them, and you're going to pay way more. You get a 45-day happiness guarantee, free shipping in the United States of America. And I just, I love my Raycons. I love the noise isolating fit. I love the fact that when I'm talking to people, they hear me, I hear them. And again, the bass isn't ridiculous. It is perfect. You get new three ways to control even more when it comes to your earbuds. And there's no stems and wires. Get your Raycons now. Buy Raycon.com slash Chad. They start under $70. Check out all of their incredible products, but these everyday Raycons are awesome, and the charging case gets you four full charges before you have to charge it again, and there's also wireless charging as well. Buyraycon.com slash Chad. Buyraycon.com slash Chad. Chad Benson Show. Running with scissors sounds great compared to this. Say woo! We were just talking about, like, you know, the media and the way that people grab things and run with it. And this is a perfect example of this. So uh, they just did this big thing about the greatest TV shows of all time. These are the greatest TV shows of all time. And number one is? Let the game begin. You follow drugs, get drug addicts, and drug dealers. Get out! But you start to follow the money, and you don't know where it's going to take you. You think I have time to ask a man why he's giving me money or where he gets his money from? The game is out there, and it's either play or get played. It's Baltimore, gentlemen. The gods... Will not save you. The Wire is what gives us box day. The Wire has been voted the number one uh, show of the 21st century. So uh, I saw a couple episodes. This is okay. And this is both American and British television shows. Several polls. It was. You know, it's just like Breaking Bad. You gotta like Breaking Bad. You gotta like you just you know, Orange is New Black. And I'm just, eh. <laughs> so, I don't know, because it's okay. And again, I'm a weird cat because I love westerns and I watch, uh, you know, and I'll go and I'll watch uh, the likes of Gunsmoke, is my favorite show, and I'll watch that. People, are, how can you watch that? How could that be that? Because at its time, it was great, and you watch it, and it takes on a lot of stuff that you're just like, whoa. But here are the top ten uh, of this century uh secession number 10 uh the office uk version nine the americans eight the leftovers seven i may destroy you six game of thrones five fleabag four breaking bad three madman two and the wire one so it's with american and british television shows 
Hmm. Okay, I guess. Let's see if which one has I've seen. I've seen Secession. I've seen the Office, the UK version. I love it. It's good. The Americans was okay. It was I didn't really get super into it. Uh, not seen the leftovers. The scene I may destroy you. It's pretty good. Game of Thrones. You know, I mean, it was. But do you like dragons and stuff? Flea bag, Breaking Bad. I tried to get to Breaking Bad. Did not do it. Mad Men. I saw it sporadically. It was okay. The Wire. It was okay for me. I'm like a kid though. I have an attention span of. I will start shows and really like them and go. Yeah, I'm never gonna watch that again. <laughs> I did. I got like, I loved House like the first three years. Never saw it. Never, ever saw the end of it, any of that stuff. It just, it was a trip. I'll get into that. Hell on Wheels, Western. I liked it. I saw the first two seasons. Never saw the rest of it. I totally, like, that is me. Like, you need to make the show. And that's why, like, I look at, like, some of my other shows. Like, people say, you know, you watch, uh, you know, Rick and Morty and stuff. First of all, there's only, like, you know, 10 episodes a year. Or Family Guy, I can always jump in and see. You don't need to always follow everything, and it's pretty simple and easy. When you do a lot of stuff, like I do, sometimes you just want that. I don't want to get stuff that's convoluted. Just make it quick, simple, and easy. Chad Benson Show. Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. Outrage is big business, huge business, massive business. Find a group, tell them they're victims, and continue to raise money off of them. Oh, it's not very nice, Chad. So yesterday was the great walkout of Netflix. It's a great walkout of Netflix. People were upset because, you know, Dave Chappelle said some jokes. I said this earlier, so... If I laugh at his jokes, am I transphobic? If I don't laugh at his jokes, am I racist? <laughs> oh, my God, the conundrum. Just put it out there. Right. Victims. Everybody's a victim. There's money in it, right? There's money in racism. And there's not money in racism like you think, oh, there is? No, there's money in telling everybody that this is racist. Give me money for my nonprofit. Give me money for this because, you know, there's power in that. There's power. So yesterday, the tolerance was seen. Gentleman shows up, probably being a bit of a troll, but also exercising his uh, uh, his his right to free speech, holding up a Dave Chappelle sign, and uh, you could hear the tolerant left while doing what it does. I'm just here to say that jokes are funny, people. Dave Chappelle, funny guy. I love Dave. I don't know why. Ah, she's fun. By the way, if you listen to that lady, she is telling a man holding up a Chappelle sign. Earlier she said, you don't have freedom of speech because he said, don't I have a right to have freedom of speech? But the thing I loved is she continued to tell him, you must repent. Excuse me? I must repent. How? How do I have to repent? Tell me how I have to repent. What exactly is that I need to do to repent to you? That's insane, right? Like, we can all agree that that's kooky. And again, Chappelle said something. People didn't like it. The beauty of this world that we live in is we have free speech. Artists should be artists. They should challenge the norms. If 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 you're telling me that being transgender is completely normal, right? And that yes, totally is. 
and hey, you know what? You be you. Then why should you be above somebody poking fun at you? I'm asking, why should you be above that? The jokes started out with a pastor molesting Dave and then something happening to the pastor went on to space juice long before it got to the transit. So if we're talking about let's all get angry, there's a thousand things we could have got angry about. If you're black, you could be angry. If you're white, you can be angry. If you're Jewish, you can be angry. If you're a Christian, you can be angry. Before we ever get to the transgender, but that's what the focus is. Because some people have deemed them off limits uh, to any kind of razzing. Or ma- well, what he did was hateful. Well, what about what he did with the Jews or the Christians? Or and we can just continue. Going, well, what about that? Is uh, we we can't talk about that? Or is that not some? Because that victimhood, there's no money in the victimhood like there is with others. Rogan had on uh, Michael Malice, who is cool. You've never seen him. Check him out. This guy's YouTube. Very thought-provoking. Talking about, you know, hey, you talked to Cat about this? Have you talked to Chappelle about um, all the that he got for yeah, that last Yeah, a little special? bit. We texted back and forth. Look, yeah. he's not a hom- homophobic or of transphobic not, yeah. person. He makes fun of himself. There's a bit in that special about him getting molested. It's just making jokes. That doesn't mean hate. This is the problem with today. If you don't have an enemy, you make an enemy. And this is a real problem with people. We, we, we look for things. Absolutely. If you don't have an enemy, you make an enemy. If you don't have an enemy, you've got to make one and in doing so right now Chappelle for the LGBT community is an enemy if you've ever watched the special which by the way all the negative press on the media side of the establishment media has brought them a ton of viewers because people want to see for themselves I have a friend who is LGBTQ just the G side of it and uh, he's like, okay, I'd see for myself. And he goes, yeah, that's pretty funny, man. I liked it. I mean, he, the story he told was about a relationship between her and him and Daphne Dorman and all of this stuff. And did he say some stuff that would upset people? He goes, why shouldn't all of that? That's part of what being a comic's all about. But you feel like you have to fill this, this I have to say the right thing here, which is, you know, whatever. Whatever, whatever the moment is. Oh yeah, climate change is real, and you people who drive, you know, cars are evil and bad. Or, or you know, yes, what he said makes him transphobic. Or you know, the fact that somebody said somebody to something over here makes you racist. And you have to say that when, in reality, a majority of people off the side are like, I don't find any of this. But you know, it's the look. Got to say the right thing. I have to, or else. Not or else. I'm glad that Netflix stood up. I'm glad that Netflix said, no, we're not going to get rid of this. And at the end of the day, for some people, what was this about? Honestly, listen to this. This is this does tell you everything you need to know about the issue. It is time to make a change. It's time to release the old and break in new. What needs to happen if the CEO at Netflix wants to make it right with trans people? Give your trans employees a raise right now. Give them a raise right now for their hard work, for their hard labor, and for putting their trauma out for the world to see. So, whoa, 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 whoa. So, because apparently you being transgender and you working hard puts you in a different pay class, and there's been trauma, so that gets you another raise. So, so that's, that's what this is about? This isn't about the fact that you feel that he is really the, the worst person because of what he did and he's, all the stuff he said now has brought violence out there. No, 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 no. It's, it's about the money. 
perfect opportunity. But think of the entitlement. And you see this now, you know, in several places where whether it's Joe Rogan and people at Spotify are like, you better get rid of Joe Rogan because he's evil and bad. When you should say, you know what, I don't agree with him, but I love free speech. <laughs> that That's the right answer. If you don't agree with something. Because nowhere, I continue to look for it, everywhere, is the right to never have your feelings hurt at all. That's not anywhere any, I'm looking, everywhere. Well, Chad, you just don't know, people don't make fun of you. Well, I'm a Christian. Listen to the first few minutes of that. Tell me if you think that's fun. Right? How about this? I found out last year that, you know, through that 23andMe app that my son wanted to find out about that, part Jewish that I didn't even know about on my mom's side. And I was like, oh, that's stuff that, you know, probably back in the day they didn't talk about. But should I be offended by it? No. You just, you don't. You stop. Every once in a while, it's okay to say, you know what, this is a fight I don't feel like fighting. This is the fight I don't feel like fighting because this is stupid. Yes. In many cases, it is completely stupid. But it's all about punishing. It's all about power. Can I show you that I have power over you? Yesterday, uh, or Tuesday, Aaron Rodgers went on. Goes on with Pat McAfee. Great podcast. You never listened to it. Pat McAfee quit in the height of his career as a punter. Said, you know what? I'm leaving a bunch of money out there. I'm going to go and work with Barstool Sports. Did a bunch of other stuff. But he, but he goes on with Pat McAfee because he can say a lot of stuff. And he has a lot of fun doing it comparatively to doing those regular things you have to do at the local radio station. It's, a, it's not a rare thing to happen. There's always trash talk between fans and players. I mean, I've heard some of the most ridiculous things, words and slurs and, and insults over the years uh, on the road. And there's back and forth from time to time. It just It's rare that it gets picked up uh, the way it did on Sundays. It's Rodgers running for the score. I realized that it was probably going to be a thing, not maybe as big a thing as it went to, you know. But... And have you not heard what he said? <laughs> It's the best. He basically told them, I own you. Because <laughs> he does. Because he does. He absolutely owns them. And people flipped out about it. They freaked out. Oh, how dare he say something like that? And the, some of the fans are just, they're just totally upset over this whole thing. You can't say it is spectacular. I own you. I own you. And then somebody's probably going to say, well, there's got to be some racial connotation in there. We've got to do that. And fans are upset. And, oh, my goodness. That is the state of, of our media. And not just media, but that's the state of our culture, I think, uh, this, this woke PC culture. There's a PC woke culture that exists, and there's a cancel culture at the same time. People's own feelings of maybe personal miserability or distaste for their own situations or life or just the enjoyment of holding other people down underneath their thumb. But when you engage in this culture, you're immersed in it and you're, and you're in it so much. And yeah, it does exist. You know, when people tell you something doesn't exist, like, oh, yeah, this stuff doesn't exist. It, it exists in a way where... If you today say the wrong thing and somebody deems that you've said something that offends somebody, you can be done. And by the way, you don't have to be a radio host, a TV host, a sports star, anything. You can be somebody who works down the street at an insurance company, is a nurse. It, it, it can be, if that's not punishment... And by the way, we're not talking about somebody dropping an end bomb and saying, you know, we're going to blow you up again. We're just talking about somebody that, hey, somebody said something or tweeted something or liked a tweet. Or that's the insanity. If that isn't trying to have power and control over people, well, what if I called you horrible names? I got that the other day. I'm like, go ahead. I don't care. I I absolutely will fight for your right to call me the worst things you want to call me as long as you don't threaten or do anything to me or my family. I don't care if you call me whatever you want to call me. Fantastic. That makes you feel better. Never want anybody canceled. I don't want to get rid of anybody. I get stupid that we even play this pretend game that like, oh, this is a great idea. It is ridiculous. It is. 
time that we start putting on a big girl in pants and sometimes picking places that you say, you know what, there are some things that we should fight for. The thing that we're not fighting for the way we should is freedom of speech, but also freedom of letting things go and not picking a fight. And know that when certain people are picking a fight, it has a lot more to do with the fact that they're raising their status and maybe padding their pocketbooks than anything else. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text the program. Love hearing from every single one of you. Follow along on all of that. Check out Gitter.com as well. Uh, we're going to start doing more and more stuff here in the coming days and weeks uh, that that we we put some stuff off. You know, coronavirus, just, you know, getting people in the studios and doing things. So we got a lot of stuff coming. My pillow right now has amazing Giza Dream Sheets. You buy one, you get one free. So you buy one, you get one free. Long staple cotton grown in the Mediterranean. The way that they put this together gives it a sateen feel. They've got king, queen, you know, twin, double. they got all of the sizes, tons of colors to choose from, 60-day money-back guarantee, and you're buying one, you're getting one free. Is amazing. They got deep discounts across all of their products, from the My Pillow itself to the Giza Dream Sheets with the buy one get one free to the My Slippers and the mattress toppers. Everything. Check it out now. Get your Giza Dream Sheets, the best sheets you will ever own. Go to mypillow.com. Use the radio listener special. Click on that. Type in code Benson to say big. Mypillow.com. Code Benson. Mypillow.com. Code Benson. Chad Benson Show. No fake outrage here. Just the real thing. The Chad Benson Show. You guys know I give my football picks, but I always do it the right way because I want to make sure I'll give all of my football picks tomorrow. But I want to make sure that I am not playing one of those Monday morning quarterbacks picking a game because tonight's Thursday Night Football. Browns, Broncos tonight. Both teams are struggling right now. The Broncos have not played well. They got off to a 3-0 and start, but that tended to be uh, more who they played rather than the representation of how the team really was. Comparatively, this was a year that a lot of people thought that, that the Browns were going to take a massive step. So the Broncos, 3-0, and now 3-3. Three and three. The Browns struggled. They got served by Arizona last week at home. They were beaten in a just an amazing game by the Chargers in Los Angeles. Uh, so it has not been the so you know I think a lot of people thought they'd be five and one by now potentially or or you know but three and three. But the reality is is so much of that is based on the fact that their team's a hot mess. Case Keenum gets the start. Baker Mayfield out with a shoulder. I wouldn't be surprised if we don't see Baker uh, if we see Baker again this year. I would be surprised. Because I have a feeling that shoulder is far worse. And he went and got a second opinion. He's out with a labrum. Is it torn? Can he get you know past it? So all that being said, you got your two running backs out. You've got your receivers should be in. Your offensive line that they spent all that money on has been injured. I still think tonight Case Keenum and the Browns get over on uh, Teddy Bridgewater, and oh, I don't even know if he's going to play tonight. I mean, that's kind of where the Broncos are at this point in time. Go the Browns tonight. Rest of my picks. I'm 62 and 32. Take that, which is a ban from England, by the way. For those of you not keeping score, three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text the program. There's a new show out, and it's about eating stuff. What kind of stuff? author and restaurateur David Chang has eaten salmon grown in a lab. I tasted it and it was really good. And it like melted my brain once you understood like, oh my gosh. His new show, The Next Thing You Eat, explores the necessity of stuff like man-made meat. By the year 2050, we're not going to have enough protein to feed the world. And the social and ethical questions surrounding it. If it allows people to eat better fish more affordably, why would you be against that? The Next Thing You Eat is on Hulu today. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. This is another one of those things. So, wait, we're not going to have enough food to feed each other? Is that really true? Enough protein out there? Is that 
Was that one of those things that just makes everybody go, oh! Heard a lot of that as a kid growing up. Doesn't always ever seem to be true, which is good. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Follow it. Follow me across all of those things. I love hearing from you. Uh, we've gotten through this week pretty much. And as we always like to say, guess what I can see? Friday, Night Night Jack. This is the Chad Benson Show.